everybody, Cinder Renee here for this week's Outlandish Comparison. Today we will be comparing the Outlander TV show episode 212, The Hail Mary, with Dragonfly and Amder chapters 37, 38, 39, 45, and the beginning of 46. Yeah, that's a lot. If you haven't watched the episode yet or plan on reading the book, please be advised that spoilers are coming. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that this week's TV episode was by far my least favorite episode of all of season one or two. So I really didn't like it, so I'm sorry if you enjoyed it. I'm going to tell you some of my reasonings now in the comparison. Here we go. In this episode, we finally get to see the head come to our Column Dougal storyline. If you recall, Colum is the older brother. He is Clan Mackenzie's chieftain. Dougal is the war chief, but he's second in line. So Colum tells Dougal that he's not going to send the Clan Mackenzie to fight for Charles Stewart. This would make sense if it were not the day before battle and Colum is telling him this. I don't know how far... The Mackenzie lands are from Cullen and Moore, but if you recall back all the way to season one, episode one, when Frank and Claire are walking through the historical site, you see a huge rock with Mackenzie written on it as a grave marker for the clan Mackenzie who fought there. Now, if... Uh, Colin wasn't sending the troops, then the only Mackenzies that would be at this battle, you would think, would just be Rupert and Dougal, which doesn't seem like they would put this one huge rock to represent the clan as a whole. So it doesn't make much sense having Colum tell Dougal that he's not going to send the troops the day before. Furthermore, Colum tells Dougal that he doesn't want... Hamish, his son, to be raised by Dougal since Colm is dying, even though it's technically Dougal's son, because he feels like Dougal's a weak man and he's not going to be a good influence on his son. He's not going to teach him the right way to lead a clan. So he actually says that he's going to have Jamie be his guardian. Now, you can see how upset Dougal is with this and... Finally, Dougal comes to call him, just he and call him, and he's just kind of talking about his childhood or whatever, and then call him dies. He, he took the poison that Claire gave him, and so they never really have any sort of moment of understanding, just kind of, okay, he's dead now. Now, in our book... This encounter takes place many months before the final battle. Colum actually meets with Claire and Jamie, and he asks Jamie's opinion. Should I let Dougal lead the Clan Mackenzie into battle for Charles Stewart? Because Jamie's been with Charles now for, I don't know, a while, and he has a better understanding of the situation then Colum's like, yeah, I've heard rumors. I need to hear, should I put my men in the, the hands of this guy? And Jamie decides to be honest with him because he is his uncle. And he's like, no, uncle, leave your men at home. And Colum says, okay, I'm going to go tell Charles that when I meet with him in the morning. He's not going to be happy, but... I'm going to tell him I'm not sending my men. And he also had asked Claire, you know, I'm in a lot of pain. Can you help me ease my pain and ease my passing sooner? And so Claire gives him cyanide. Now in her book, he doesn't take it. He falls asleep and he dies in his sleep before he can meet with Charles Stewart to tell him that he's not sending troops. So it's like this huge, oh my gosh, the Mackenzies are going to be saved, and 
boom. No, they aren't. And it's, you kind of have this, you feel so sad because now, you know, this entire clan is just going to be wiped out just because Colum's body couldn't last one more day to tell Charles that he wasn't going to send his troops. I think that in our book version, because of that tension, like, oh, if Colum's body would have lasted till morning, it just makes for such a more compelling story. And it's so much more emotional, especially because Colum had been thinking of killing himself because he was in so much pain. And yet, for his own men, he was like, I'm gonna withstand the pain until I can save them by telling Charles that I'm not sending them. But his body gives out, and I'm about to cry thinking about it because it's so amazing and beautiful and tragically beautiful. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop now. All right, now I'm a bit more composed again. In this episode and book, we also get to see the head of our Mary, Alex, and Jack Randall storyline. Now in our show, Mary and Claire run into each other and Mary's very rude to Claire. And I know this comes from in a previous episode when Claire told Alex, like, look, you're very sick and Mary should have a better life. But I just didn't like it because Mary has always looked up to Claire as almost an older sister slash mother, you know, a, a figure she could really look up to. And now all of a sudden she's rude to her and just kind of like, I don't need your help. And lying to Claire saying, yeah, he's, he's got a job. It's great. We're fine. And then when Claire finally comes to the room and sees how sick Alex really is, you know, she, she tells Mary he's going to die. And Mary's just kind of in denial about it. Also in our show, Jack knows already that Mary is pregnant. So that fact is already there. So Alex asks Jack to marry Mary. And Jack's like, no, not doing it. The one element that I did really like in the show was how Murtaugh chimed in and said, I I'll do it. I'll, I'll marry Mary. And it was this beautiful moment where you can see, again, that tender side of Murtaugh that he keeps hidden. But it was really beautiful to see that. And I really liked that added element. Now, in our book version, I love how Black Jack Randall is brought low. He is humbled because he actually does care about his brother. I think it's probably the only person he actually loves in the world. He seeks Claire's help to heal or at least just make his brother comfortable. He seeks Claire out and he volunteers to give information on the British troop movement and just spy on the British for Claire. He's willing to betray his own country, the country that gives him the source of his power that he thrives off of so much. He's willing to betray his country for his brother. Now in our book, Claire is actually taking care of Alex for a while. And when it's finally, he's really bad and Claire is back to look at him again and you see how much Mary has grown up because she can tell that he's dying. He, obviously, she doesn't want him to die because she loves him so much. But Mary kind of breaks down to Claire and says, I know we've had a couple of months together, which is better than most people ever have, but it's not enough. I want more. And your heart just breaks for Mary. Now, Alex asks Claire, can you bring your husband tomorrow? And Claire just... Okay, if you want to see Jamie, that's okay, your dying wish, sure, I'll bring him. She has no idea why. And when they get there the next day, it's so intense to see Jack there 
and Jamie there in the same room together again, but having to maintain cordial behavior. It's like the tension you could cut with a knife. In that moment, you already have Jack and Jamie in the same room. Then you find out that Mary's pregnant. And then you find out that Alex wants Mary and Jack to be married. And it's just like this tense, tense, tense moment. I felt like in our show, there were so many of those intense punchline kind of moments that they didn't save, they didn't hold the tension, they just kind of told you in an offhanded manner and it wasn't very powerful. The other element that the show did add that was kind of neat was Jamie kind of convincing Charles and company to have one last final, final Hail Mary, a play. We're gonna try surprise attack because Jamie knows what's coming in the morning. If he waits till the next day, he knows they're all gonna be slaughtered. So he's like, let's try a surprise attack at night. And that was really cool. The show ends on Murtaugh's face going, there will be a battle tomorrow, and call it in more. And it's like, junk. We tried everything to change history, but it didn't work. Last week's episode was awesome. It was one of my favorites. I have been waiting for years to see the Duke of Sandringham get his. This week's episode though, there is a line that I've been waiting to hear Jamie say for years and it just wasn't said. I hope they say it next week, but I wanna see Jamie say, damn all Randalls. It's like Jamie's moment. You're so on his side and you get where he's coming from. And I expected that in this week's episode. No. So I was very disappointed. I'm sorry to those of you who really liked this week's episode. But if you enjoy the comparison, please like it, share and subscribe. And I will see you for the season finale. Mary of Soul, she said.